Good morning, Chairwoman Klobuchar, Ranking Member Blunt, Chairman Peters, and Ranking Member Portman. Thank you for allowing me the opportunity to testify before your two committees regarding the attack on the United States Capitol that occurred January 6th. I have been in policing for almost 30 years. The events I witnessed on January 6th was the worst attack on law enforcement and our democracy that I have seen in my entire career. I witnessed insurgents beating police officers with fists, pipes, sticks, bats, metal barricades, and flagpoles. These criminals came prepared for war. They came with their own radio system to coordinate the attack and climbing gear and other equipment to defeat the Capitol's security features. I am sickened by what I witnessed that day. Our officers fought valiantly using batons, shields, chemical munitions, and pepper ball guns to hold back the attackers. Capitol Police and responding law enforcement agencies showed tremendous restraint by not using their firearms, which would have likely led to a more chaotic situation and a possible mass casualty incident. No civilian law enforcement agency, to include the United States Capitol Police, is trained or equipped to repel an insurrection of thousands of individuals focused on breaching a building at all costs. I am extremely proud and appreciative of the Capitol Police officers, the Metropolitan Police Department, and the other law enforcement agencies that came to our assistance. A clear lack of accurate and complete intelligence across several federal agencies contributed to this event and not poor planning by the United States Capitol Police. We rely on accurate information from our federal partners to help us develop effective security plans. The intelligence that we based our planning on indicated that the January 6th protests were expected to be similar to the previous MAGA rallies in 2020, which drew tens of thousands of participants. The assessment indicated that members of the Proud Boys, white supremacist groups, Antifa, and other extremist groups were expected to participate on January 6th and that they may be inclined to become violent. Based on the intelligence that we received, we plan for an increased level of violence at the Capitol and that some participants may be armed. But none of the intelligence we received predicted what actually occurred. Extensive preparations were put into place for January 6th that included the full activation of the department, intelligence and information sharing with our federal and local partners and department officials, implementing a significant enhancement for member protection, extensive operational enhancements to include significant civil disobedience deployment and an expanded perimeter. We also distributed additional protective equipment for our officers and coordinated, and coordinated outside agency support. As recent as Tuesday, January 5th, during a meeting I hosted with my executive team, the Capitol Police Board, and a dozen of the top law enforcement and military officials from D.C., no entity, including the FBI, provided any new intelligence regarding January 6th. It should be no also noted that the Secretary of Homeland Security did not issue an elevated or imminent alert in reference to the events at the United States Capitol on January 6th. We properly planned for a mass demonstration with possible violence. What we got was a military-style coordinated assault on my officers and a violent takeover of the Capitol building. I know that the images we saw of the officers battling for their lives and the visuals on national TV had a profound effect on the nation. The United States Capitol Police did everything we could based on the intelligence and available resources to prepare for this event. While my officers were fighting, my post was in the command center coordinating resources from numerous agencies around the National Capital Region to provide critically needed support. I was also briefing the two sergeant at arms and working on establishing accountability and priorities for the incoming resources. As Capitol Police and outside resources began to reestablish the security perimeter, I responded to the Capitol building to personally evaluate the situation and brief the sergeant at arms and leadership. I acknowledge that under the pressure of an unprecedented attack, a number of systems broke down. One of the reported issues described by officers was a lack of clear communications and directions from officials. It appears that the established incident command for the Capitol building was overwhelmed by the enormity of the situation and as officials battling insurrections as opposed to directing the response. There have also been reports that some officers may have felt confused or let down during the attack. As an official who cares as much as I do about my colleagues, nothing is more painful to me. These issues must be addressed through new training, policies, and procedures. Even our best efforts were not enough to stop this unprecedented assault on the Capitol. 
However, casting blame solely on United States Capitol Police leadership is not only misplaced, but it also minimizes what truly occurred that day. The focus going forward needs to be on the efforts to improve intelligence and the coordination of security measures between all involved agencies. Hopefully, this will be part in the, of the focus of an independent after-action committee to look at all aspects of the January attack on our nation's capital. In closing, I want to again recognize the heroic efforts of the Capitol Police officers who on January 6th, outnumbered and against the odds, successfully carried out their mission to protect the members of Congress and the legislative process. I couldn't have been more proud to be part of their team and the USCP mission. I'm available to answer any questions you may have.